So many of our Space.com readers would like to congratulate you on getting to this amazing first flight test of this pretty cool vehicle. We know that it has been a long road. But some of those folks would like to ask you a tough question or two, not uh, technically tough, but maybe politically challenging. Yes. Will Orion really take us to Mars, back to the moon, to the near-Earth asteroids, or are we just building a capability here with no programmatic mandate? No, Orion is intended to do ex exactly those things that you mentioned, and it will do that. Uh, this is the, the first step for Orion in being able to take humans to deep space, particularly to destinations like lunar orbit, uh, like an asteroid, and, and on to Mars in the 2030s. So it, it definitely will do that. Well, we know that there are some skeptical voices out there who say that Orion only exists so that we can construct a space launch system to stack underneath it, and SLS itself only exists so that certain congressional districts will have insured and preserved jobs. But what do you say, sir? Well, I, I, I say that the nation has a plan uh, in place to, to ex continue to explore our solar system. Uh, our ultimate destination for humanity is, as it has been for, for decades now, for eons, is Mars. But there are a number of places that we intend to go en route. Uh, we have a lot of work to do in what we call the proving ground in cislunar space, uh, lunar orbit. We have an incredibly important robotic mission between now and then uh, that we call the Asteroid Redirect Mission, for which I think uh, it, it was mentioned uh, in an interview I did earlier about Rosetta. Rosetta was a perfect precursor uh, for our asteroid redirect mission because it did demonstrate the ability of humans to send a robotic vehicle to rendezvous with a comet or an asteroid uh, and place a lander on that, on that body. Uh, those are very important things for us, and we cannot forget our own environment here at Earth. NASA is about Earth, and um, so we, we will be launching five missions this year that will be dedicated to the study of Earth. We've already placed one of those on the International Space Station. That's not been done before. Uh, and, and we must not allow people to forget that uh, even as we speak, we have six humans who are orbiting Earth on the International Space Station, as they have been doing now continuously for the last 14-plus years. Uh, that's no small feat, and, and they are living and working in space for up to six months at a time. That's very, very important. And then uh, not to mention that we like to say NASA is with you when you fly. We're very busy in the field of aeronautics, so we're, we're a busy, busy group of people. Yes, you certainly are. Could we imagine an Orion atop, say, a SpaceX Super Heavy, or for that matter, a human flight profile rated Delta IV or Atlas V? You know, our plan calls for, uh, and I can imagine an Orion atop SLS as we plan um, uh, in the 2017-2018 time frame for its first uh, mated mission, EM-1, uh, followed uh, shortly by EM-2 when we put humans aboard for the first time. Um, that, that, that will become reality as we move step by step forward in this program. Uh, we've, we've said, we've challenged ourselves to do a number of things, bring about commercial capability to handle low Earth orbit access. We are doing that. Uh, we've successfully been able to, do, to launch uh, vehicles carrying cargo to the International Space Station by American industry to re rely, relieve us of our reliance on Russia to do that. Uh, in 2017, we hope to have two American companies, Boeing and SpaceX, who will be carrying American crews from uh, right here uh, in the vicinity of where I am sitting uh, so that we will be away from our reliance on Russia to get crews to the International Space Station. That all has freed us up to work on SLS and Orion so that we can carry out our deep space exploration missions uh, which NASA is, is um, on which NASA is embarked right now with the c concurrence and approval of both the administration and the Congress all, from all the way back in 2010. And we expect that that, w that support will be sustained uh, through multiple administrations and multiple Congresses. Got it. And a last question, sir. You mentioned deep space missions and a few moments ago the comet, uh, Rosetta Comet and uh, asteroids. Do you yeah. think that Orion will be around long enough to take advantage of on-orbit propellant depots that first might be fueled from the ground and then eventually from in-space resources like comet water or asteroid resources? 
Dave, as a result of the research that we have been doing, the, the, the technology development for Orion and SLS, uh, you're going to see those types of things on orbit depots much sooner than they would have materialized. Uh, it's important to understand, uh, you know, the, just the techniques, the processes that we're using to, to build the, the, the core assembly for SLS, uh, the types of welding that we do, the type of assembly that we do. These are revolutionary technologies that are being developed uh, to support these programs, but they, they have, a, they have a, an, an amplifying effect for other things. We're going to have composite tanks and things that will enable us to, to actually realize real on-orbit uh, fuel depots that, that were not going to be possible before. Uh, you know, we were fooling ourselves if we thought they were just going to happen. It takes technology development, and everything that we're doing to develop Orion and SLS will feed into what is going to be required to enable us to put on-orbit depots in space. So Orion, uh, SLS, uh, and other commercial vehicles, privately developed vehicles, will be able to one day take advantage of the on-orbit depots that will be developed and will come about as a result of some of the, the technology development that has gone into producing Orion and SLS and some of the other vehicles that we're building now. Well, that's a great answer, and thank you very much, Mr. Administrator, for spending some time with us today, and best wishes for a successful EFT-1 test. Thanks very much, Dave, and I, I hope I'll get a chance to see you while I'm down here. We can, uh, we can talk a little bit about STS-60, which was a long time ago. Indeed it was, sir. <laughs> Space.com.